local production of drugs and medical equipment in West Africa and beyond. Uh, so it's not only in West Africa, it's West Africa and beyond. So and for this very positive upbeat note, uh, it's my pleasure to call upon uh, Dr. Obi Peter Adigwe, who is the Director General CEO of the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRD. Dr. Adigwe, you have three minutes, and my friendly timekeeper is watching. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Adi. Uh, and I'm really glad to hear that uh, uh, Dr. Okoli, uh, Group Managing Director of EMZO, who used to belong to my sector when I was the Executive Secretary of PMG Man, is, is doing well, that there is a lot of attention uh, in the industry. Uh, however, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I, I hate to sound like a wet blanket, but we, we have seen this sort of interest before uh, in pharma. Uh, the PMPA was endorsed over a decade and a half ago, and we know the outcome of that particular document. Many member nations even have older roadmaps uh, for local uh, manufacturing, which are decades old, and uh, we haven't yet gotten to where we should, uh, uh, as, 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 as is indicative of our capacity here in Africa. Uh, and, and I'm afraid that if we don't uh, look at this issue very well, the outcome of this colloquium may yet result in another beautifully printed policy paper that will be for the bookshelves. I think there's several ingredients that are key, and in the interest of time, I'll mention just one of them, which we should all take note of. There needs to be an identification of a critical mass of leaders in the sector, stakeholders who are big picture thinkers. These leaders must be passionate about Africa. These leaders must have the relevant capacity. And these leaders, most importantly, should be those who are not afraid to say and act the truth, no matter whose ox uh, is God. I've heard over and over again people saying that COVID uh, caught us unawares. Uh, unfortunately, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that is not true. Uh, some of us foresaw and predicted the unfortunate and dastardly scenario that Africa has found itself in within this pandemic. Uh, on Tuesday, the 19th of December 2017, myself and, myself and colleagues presented the medicine security concept in Addis at an AU event. And at that point in time, uh, that concept had already been fully developed and formulated. It's a concept that argues that unless the people are able to control how their medicines are manufactured and distributed, that particular population will not be able to ensure sustainable access to uh, high quality, affordable, and uh, 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 sustainable medicines for that population. Additionally, the medicine security concept also ensures that within the system, the uh, soci social economic uh, objectives are also uh, foster things like job creation for the people in the country, things like capacity building, knowledge transfer, and revenue generation, both for the actors in the, sec in the sector as well as for government. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to pick up on this particular concept as much as we should have. And I think this particular seminar, this colloquium, is a good uh, place for us to look back and see how we can bring this on board. Uh, at NIPRID, uh, the agency which I had, uh, we pride ourselves by underpinning all our projects with the aforementioned objectives, improving access to healthcare, whilst also achieving socioeconomic objectives. And we also ensure that all our interventions are multidisciplinary, they're collaborative, and each of them is designed to achieve at least four SDGs. Currently, we have about 37 projects, but in the interest of time, I'll mention just two of them. One is the artificial intelligence project, which we have, put, which have kicked up by building the infrastructure. A partner gave us an infrastructure here. And it's an innovative concept that enables us to use algorithms from artificial intelligence to map phytomedicines that are developed in Africa against diseases that are prevalent in Africa, helping us to 
cut through a lot of the red tape that uh, in vivo and in vitro studies are meant to uh, put forward. The second one is the contextual processing protocol, which is designed to go to the grassroots and ensure that rural women, rural youth, are able to harness things like azadiracta in DECA and process it to world standard teas, world standard capsules that can be exported and used within their setting. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, I think one thing we need to be sure of and to be clear is that there needs to be a calculated and uh, assertive commitment by all stakeholders uh, to ensure that going forward, investment in R&D needs to be prioritized. Uh, we've heard about the interest in the manufacturing sector. That is downstream. Upstream where the ideas are conceptualized, where the resources in Africa are harnessed, that's the research and development sector. And often that uh, responsibility is left for government. More stakeholders need to step in. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think uh, with this, uh, I want to assure you that NIPRID is open to collaboration and partnership. And I thank you for your kind attention uh, whilst permitting me to welcome you uh, to what I believe will be an initiation of the coalition of the intrepid, the competent, and the patriotic. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adigwe. Uh, that's uh, very powerful stuff there. I uh, really, really uh, appreciate it. You've pointed to upstream, uh, the upstream dimension for investments as well, so R&D and, and training and development, and of course, uh, the, the more downstream dimensions of it, also touching on AI, which was a very interesting segue there. Uh, that reminds me of a question that just came in, uh, talking about how Africa uh, can fend off competition from foreign pharmaceutical companies. Um, I think we had quite an inspirational chat there from uh, Dr. Stella Okoli, and earlier on from, uh, from Mr. Shah, I believe uh, it was. But first, it's important to put in the money for the investment. The, the, the AFC, the, the common uh, free trade area, uh, provides opportunities for economies of scale and the developing regulatory environment together with a commitment to higher quality uh, means that those who invest on the continent with an eye on the market of 1.3 billion people on the continent, as well as folks outside the continent, uh, can now aim to achieve economies of scale at quality. And that is a way to fend, uh, to fend off competition. But you cannot compete if you do not go into the arena. So again, the call that is going out from this forum, uh, from this summit uh, that we're participating in today, is that Africa is open for business, that Africa is the land of opportunities in the health industry and manufacturing, and that Africa is not the land of charity. 